Hey everybody, welcome back. I'll tell you what, we are all here today and we're going to go over some spring tactics on catching walleyes in the river system like the Winnebago system. You know, right now it's definitely pre-spawn. Uh, the water temperature is running about 34 to 35 degrees. Things are starting to happen. We've got a lot of warm weather coming. The water is extremely low this year, which changes a lot of things. We're in the boat today with Kent Anderson, National Sales Manager from Warrior Boats. And, well, who are you? Let's tell everybody. Tell, Jacob Anderson. Well, who's Jacob Anderson? Me. Jacob Anderson is him, right? Is Kent Anderson your dad? And are you my super buddy? There you go. Hey, who's going to catch the fish today? Me. Let's get it done. Uh, that's regular. You can do, that's not hot. Is it awesome? Yeah, it's awesome. There's two fish. Here we go. Seems like a good fish, too. Of course, we don't carry nothing in the boat. Caught that one the hard way, didn't you? Yeah, oh, that's good. Oh, Oh, I tell you what, staying vertical, here we go, is really key, just hooked up. Sometimes I like to go just a little bit slower than the natural current's going, and I have my line pitched a little bit slightly downstream. Now there is days where just keeping that line straight up and down, perfectly vertical, uh, really works out good too. And it seems like when the current is stronger, I like to stay perfectly vertical. But if the current is like it is now with the low water conditions, I like to have it where that line is slightly downstream and I'm always pumping the rod forward, not straight up and down. So always pumping it forward makes, makes a big difference right there. All I'm using today, again, I always try to go with the lightest jig possible. I just have a quarter ounce jig on here now and basically just the shiner. And I'll show you how I'm hooking this shiner so you don't have to use a finger hook. Good way to start it off. Jacob, I'm up on you, man. In the bucket. You want to throw him in the bucket? Hey, buddy, on the next pass, we're going to get your rod out and you're going to do it too. Because my phone used to say Hunter Flanders iPhone. Now my boy flew hijacked and now she changed it to Sugar Daddy's iPhone. You know, for me, I, I prefer no doubt using a type of super braid and usually a high vis line um, because a lot of days, you know, like today, it's overcast. So the visual on straight mono, you don't have it there. And when you're vertical jigging, you're dropping that bait down and 90% of the fish are gonna hit it on the fall. So you wanna catch that because that fish can actually roll that jig, suck that jig into his mouth and roll it out before you even come back up. So the second that that fish hits that, you want to respond to that. So having that high vis line, a lot of times two things, you got the sensitivity of it because there's no stretch to it. And then the other part is when you have high vis, you can actually see that line jump like that and set the hook instantly. And that's a big thing. The other part is too, is that most of the time you're fishing a lot of current. And again, when you're fishing current, that, that super braid is going to cut that current better than a mono and again you're not going to have that stretch so what we do is basically you can either tie a swivel in and a lot of times that's the way to do it with some type of fluorocarbon leader you got to remember when you're fishing in a river in the spring most of the time the water is really dirty so you can get away with a lot heavier super braid like anywhere i like to use the lightest typically is eight pound test for a leader up to a 14 pound test. It all depends on what really is on the bottom. Like today we're downtown here working through Oshkosh. There's not a lot of debris in this part of the river, but if we were up river like into the Wolf, uh, there's a lot of timber and stuff down there. So basically when I get into that kind of scenario, I will go with a heavier fluorocarbon leader. I'm using typically 10 pound test super braid, um, which is a four pound diameter. And then again, you know, I vary my leader and it depends on what is on the bottom. Um, you start fishing a lot of that heavy timber area, you want to be able to bend that hook out straight out and be able to get that jig out versus breaking it off all the time. Hold it. And then when you feel them go tunk, and then set the hook on them. That means it's a patch? No. Yes. A patch is down to the, the dock. Yeah, down to the docks. See, you pick it up, 
And there's bottom. Just pick it up and hold it. You don't have to move it a whole lot because they'll smack it. We gotta hold it. I think it, a lot of times it's best just to hold it still than over jig it. Yeah, but are you down by bottom? There's bottom right there. So there's bottom. Hold it like right there, and then every once in a while just drop it down slow. There's bottom, and then pick it up slow. But hang on to it with your right hand. Eat with your left hand. A little bit, and then you just kind of bounce it along, nice and slow. And then when you feel him go smack, you know what to do. What do you do if he smacks it? Set the hook. Here, you got a hold of it. Don't hit it on the boat though. All right, like that, but now don't do that again. Pay attention now. Here, let me pull a little line out for you. Here, you got a hold of that thing? There. The perch population is just amazing how that's come back. Because that closes on the bay, don't it? Yeah, it closed Sunday. And they did that because of the lack of numbers? Yep. Let's catch this fish here. Look at him hang on that. Look at that. I think we can get him to bite. I think I can catch this one. How long should I feed him for? Not a lot longer than that, apparently. You had another one? Yeah, how long hanging? was I hanging on that one? Wow. Someone, someone zonked. Yeah. We, lo we lost a member of our fishing crew. Yeah, he's down, huh? He's down. One key when you're fishing with a jig is to make sure you got a sharp hook. I've been missing a lot of fish here today, and I'm just starting to think. Larry gave me a jig without a tip. Smashed it with the players or something. We're gonna keep trying it, though. And sometimes I'll go through the mouth out the gill, then back through the minnow. It just slides that minnow up your shank a little bit further for those short biters. You know, one thing when you're fishing rivers or fishing in wind alike that really comes in the key is boat control. And one thing as a warrior owner that uh, we have advantage over a lot of people is the smart trolling keel on the warrior boat really makes it almost effortless for keeping your boat where you want it. That keel's much deeper than the stern of the boat. It's about three and a half inches. But what that does is it keeps your bow from drifting. I mean, you can actually put the Warriors in a drift, a side drift with your motor down and the, the keel down. That boat's gonna drift nice and perfectly rather than a lot of boats in a drift situation, the nose is gonna blow down. So not only forward trolling, drifting, or even back trolling um, that I do a lot of, that smart trolling keel is key to keep you on the fish. and. Uh, a lot less time driving your boat and a lot more time fishing. Hey, I'll tell you what, definitely stick, keeping that boat, even with that current, makes a big difference. And today we've got kind of an odd wind. You don't have a super amount of current. Uh, so what I'm doing, I'm actually using the bow mount to try to keep us just slightly moving slower than the current is. And sometimes my nose is pointed downstream if the wind starts picking up. And sometimes like now, I'm basically sideways in the current. But again, boat control is everything. And you know, learning how to use your trolling motor really is gonna make you a, a lot better jig fisherman. Again, when you start looking at a vertical presentation like we're doing now, definitely spending the time. And a lot of times, you know, I see guys with two rods in their hands and really, you know, that, that really sometimes takes away from really your ability to keep that boat under control. So again, it's more about, and some guys are very good at two rods and boat control, but the key, the key to the whole thing is that make sure that you can control that boat and keep that boat moving at that perfect pace downstream, again, slightly slower than the current. Now Kent, what were you doing? You're doing something different. Let's talk about what you're doing when you get that fish up and hand me a minnow. You hear that? I got to wait on Larry Smith and wait on him and wait on him and wait Well, on you got him. the middle bucket by you, right? That's how that goes. I know. You, you know why the middle do I, bucket by me. Why do I have the middle bucket by me? Right, that's a good Because step. I've been feeding them. What do you want to do with these two? Throw them in the bucket. Mine could eat his. It's okay. Right. Let me get him a minnow. Should I give him a live one or a dead one? Oh, he's full. Give him that one. Right. He likes that's, that's dead. for Larry Smith. That's dead and dead. You think they? Do you think they know yeah, if they're alive they or dead? Yeah. 
That, I look at that minnow. He's even discolored. There's no color on that minnow. I don't want no dead minnow. A bite tough enough the way it is. Kent, now you're doing something a little bit different. I'm definitely popping mine up and following the, the bait back down. And you're definitely doing something a little bit different. And, and you know, that's the whole thing. Some days they want it one way and sometimes they want it other. And today it looks like both techniques are working. But let's talk about your technique. Well, I'm just uh, more or less holding it rather than jigging it. I'm keeping it, you know, two to six inches off bottom and just holding it and waiting for him to grab it and periodically just checking bottom, making sure I'm down there where I want to be. And I, I always, personally, I've always found colder water where I normally fish. Granted, this is about the first, or second time in my life I've been on Lake Winnebago before uh, April 15th. And yeah, I just sit there and hold it and wait for them to grab it. When they grab it, I drop it back a little bit and cross their eyes and I finally was able to connect on one. Hooked, you were hooked up. Hey, I'll tell you what, again, just kind of popping it and following it down. You know, a big thing is too, you guys, is that I think myself the big part is that when you're vertical jigging, is that I actually let that line go slack at least anywhere from three to four inches. And what actually it does is if you watch that, that minnow actually lays flat on the bottom. So a lot of times guys will vertical jig, they'll pop it up and as soon as it hits, they're coming back up. I actually make sure that that line goes slack enough where that jig is laying sideways. And a lot of times that's key. There you go, Kent. There is walleyes in Lake Winnebago. Yeah. Hey Schneider, you don't lie. They're not very big, but there's walleyes here. Is he gonna we get We don't eaten? let him get big. Is he gonna go back? Kill everything. It just took me a while to get back in the swing of things. It's been a long off season. Getting bigger. Mad like Hunter. Same thing holding it? Just holding her. That's a better fish. Will we make it in the boat? Ooh, that is that a good one. That one, yes. It's gonna Gotta like that one. That one ate it. I wouldn't call it choke, but definitely swallowed. Do you think a lot of times too, you know, as the, as the day goes on, you know, like a lot of times guys think about coming out super early in the morning, Kent. You think that when it gets cold at night or like this morning you had a lot of moisture and it cools the water temperature down, you think later in the day the bite gets better because it typically warms up? Absolutely, this time of year. I think the, I know I fish a lot on the Mississippi or have in my life and in that spring you might get that early, early push up shallow casting and stuff, but it seems like later in the day as the water warms up those fish get a little more active. Especially when you have things like, you know, snow or rain this time of year and the temperatures are cold, that cools that water temperature down a little bit. And we definitely had that. I drove out here this morning from Amory and it was uh, snowing when I left and snowing when I got to Oshkosh. Then we sat and uh, ate some pizza in the office and said, hey, let's go play in the rain. Ooh, there's a fish here. Now you can see what happened here on this. This fish here pin pinned it to the bottom see what happens when they're hooked underneath like that. They actually slam it down to the bottom with their chin and try to capture it like that. And a lot of times that happens, especially in the spring like this. I'm gonna let this one go. Again, just kind of holding that plastic, you know, within about two inches off the bottom. Once in a while, just tapping the bottom about every, you know, probably every 30 seconds and then holding it again. And you'll see that plastic when it's down there actually with the current there's actually quite a bit of movement that tail is moving back and forth there and you know with them baits like that there's a lot of pulsing you know that uh, ringworm is a great bait because of the way it's cut like that it just pulses in the water with that current Oop, there's one. i kind of like you know when it comes to jigging especially vertical i like like a 662 a more of a medium action rod um, again, just so you can really get, some days you really got to flip that bait heavy. You know, the cadence really varies from day to day and sometimes from hour to hour in what these fish want. You know, 
The great part about it nowadays is that you know these fish are down there with electronics. It's not like the old days where you're guessing all the time. You might see fish down there with your electronics, but you're not quite sure with what they are. Nowadays, with the side imaging, you can really, the detailing is incredible. You can really distinguish what they are, if they're sheephead, if they're suckers, if they're walleye. Um, that's the great part. So when you know that these fish are down there, and it gives you the confidence that they are walleye, obviously you really want to keep changing your cadence, changing the colors, and just doing different things to get these fish to trigger. Hey, thanks again for joining us this week. For more tips, make sure you guys subscribe to our YouTube channel right down below. Oh my gosh, it's a monster. Ooh, that's a good one. There you go. So far, I'll pay you 20. Hey, I'll tell you what, if you don't want your kids growing up to be like Shotgun Schaefer, maybe you need to subscribe to our YouTube channel down below.